Hi and welcome to the second video on whiteboard testing, but the first video that's actually about testing. Uh, my name is Richard Bradshaw, aka The Friendly Tester, and today's video is going to be about regression testing. Now before we dive into the video, it's probably good, sensible to have a look at the word regression. Um, so by definition, it's return to a former or less developed state. Um, so when most people talk about regression testing, you know, they're talking about testing to see if something has regressed. Uh, see if something's got worse or slid backwards, or if a change in, it, in part A has in fact impacted part B. Um, and that's what most people talk about when we talk about regression testing. Now, I want to try and explain why I believe some people's approaches to regression testing is flawed. And to do that, I created a model which we'll go through, um, and I named it aptly the flawed approach to regression testing. Uh, about an hour later, though, I realised that in acronym form, that is FART. Uh, which is actually quite entertaining and, and also quite relevant as well. Um, so let me try and explain the model to you. So we need to view the model as a stack. So the biggest part of the model is the system. Uh, the second part is knowledge. Now the knowledge is not as big as the system because we, I don't believe we can ever fully understand the system. We can't know 100% everything that the system does. Um, so that's why it's not as big as the system. And then we have checks. Now, mostly these are automated checks or automated tests, if that's your terminology, but for me, they're checks. And this is where we've codified some of our knowledge. So we've taken some of our knowledge that we have and we've codified it into checks. Now, this is some people's approach to regression testing. The, mainly the people who say we can automate our regression testing or tool vendors that tell you you can automate your regression testing. And people go, yeah, 100% of our regression testing is automated. Now, I want to try and pick holes in that and tell you why it's flawed. Now, for that to be the case, the knowledge that you think you have has to stay the same. So, this is what these arrows are trying to indicate. So, as your system gets bigger, your knowledge gets bigger, and your checks get bigger, and it just continues to grow. You just continue to add more and more checks to your suite, you do a bit of testing, you automate it, and then you have more checks, and then you just carry on going like that. And I've seen people do that, they just keep adding and adding and adding checks to the suite, just gets bigger and bigger and bigger and takes longer and longer to run. But that is some people's approach to regression testing. Now I want to tell you why I think it's flawed. Now I think it's flawed because the system's always changing, you know, obviously the fact that you have a job means the system's on the move. You know, there's lots of change going on. And it isn't always new features, obviously new features would be making the system bigger and bigger and bigger. It's also changes that go on in the system. You know, there could be a change over here, there could be a change over here, there could be a change over here, a change here. But there's also going to be changes in the areas that we think we know. So, you know, there'll be changes here, and there'll be changes here, and here, and here. But there'll also be changes in the areas that we've automated. So there'll be changes here, and here, and here. Now, obviously, sometimes your automation will fail, and that's probably due to a change that you were not expecting. But there's also situations, a lot of the time, where your checks will pass, even though... So that area has changed. It's just that the time that you wrote that check, the system looked like Y and now it looks like X. So the check that you wrote may not be, may not be substantial, it may not be checking the right things anymore. But because of the data that you're feeding into it, it's still passing. Uh, and that's a real risk with this approach to regression testing of just not going back and reviewing. Uh, so one of the other areas as well is that our knowledge has to keep up. So if these areas have changed, we now need to go back and gain knowledge on these areas. We need to try and fill these goals. Um, and it's the same with the checks. We now need to go and find out what's changed here so we can try and fill our gaps. But there's also, this is now based on the fact that there's, um, there's been changes, but there's also going to be always gaps in your knowledge. So there's always going to be new things that you need to try and learn on, on the existing system, which aren't to do with changes. You just didn't know about them. And whatever reason, you've now come across it to find out. Perhaps it's because you went back to actually do some testing, or you just thought of a new scenario. Or someone told you that the system behaves in such a way, it could be support or on social media. So, this is, why I expect, this is why I'm trying to explain that I think it's a flawed approach, because the fact that there's lots of change going on means that you have to continuously change these. And the other reason why I say it's flawed to other people is, if you're spending all your time trying to make your automation the same as your knowledge, so you're trying to codify all your knowledge, well, when are you going to gain any new knowledge? And we test because we need to gain knowledge, we need to gain information to help, the, to help our business, to help our stakeholders. You know, here I've given, I've given a definition of knowledge. 
you know, facts, information, awareness, familiarity gained through experience. You know, we experience things as humans, but the automation just detects change. So I talk about automation, and as do others, as being change detection. These checks are great if you understand what they're doing. They're just detecting change against some model. So that model, in most cases, is some knowledge that you codify. But that knowledge was based on, like I said, when the system looked like X, and it doesn't look like that anymore. So we need to be continually sort of reviewing this automation. So if your approach is just to keep building check after check after check and run them all, and if they're green, move on, if that's your approach to regression testing, I think it's massively flawed. We need to test. We need to go and find out what impact changes have had. The fact that um, automation has gone green just isn't enough. And we need to be very careful of being fooled by green. Um, Michael Bolton has a great post on this, which I'll link in the description. Just because something's green doesn't mean it's right. It means that no change was detected on the knowledge that we codified. But as I said, the knowledge that you codified may not be good enough anymore. It may not be deep enough. It may not be about the right things. So we have to continuously go back and review. Um, so that's what the model is trying to explain. So obviously I can't just tell you that you're all doing it wrong or that certain people are doing it wrong or that you can't all make progression testing without giving you some insights into what else you can do. So there's a great model, um, sorry, a great mnemonic by a lady called Karen Johnson, and it's called RCRCRC. Um, and it's essentially a mnemonic to help you with regression testing. Um, but it's also, you know, they, they, when I go through this, just try and think of new test ideas. But also try and think of the checks that you've written and would they help you in this scenario. So the first one we've got, obviously, is recent. What's recently changed in the system that may lead to some test happening? As I said, you might have a new feature, but now you need to go and see how that new feature may have impacted other areas. But you don't have to wait for the end to do that. You could do that whilst testing the new feature. And um, we also have core. So obviously this is where a lot of uh, focus of automation gets put, on the core functionality of a business. You know, I like to say the things that the system is depend the company is dependent on. Like if you're Amazon and you can't pay or you can't purchase, that's detrimental to some of their systems. So we need to focus on core areas. That's even, that makes it even more important for testing. If something's going on that may impact your core functionality, you need to know. You need to test to find that out. Your automation can't go and learn. It can only, it only knows what you told it. So you know, you're going to have to go and look at that core. And then you've got risky. So you know, here we're talking about areas that are maybe at risk. Uh, you know, there have been a lot of changes in those areas or um, there's been huge rewrites in those areas. You know, a lot of when a developer says, "Ah, oh, just done some refactoring, just a bit of refactoring." Is that really? You know, refactoring is a risky business sometimes. So you know, you need to be aware, and perhaps there's new information to be learnt now from the way the code now works. And um, one of the other ones is configuration. Now, I feel this one is um, more appropriate these days as well because of the whole DevOps movement that a lot of people are going through. You know, we now deploy randomly on the fly, you know, there'll be new scripts for deployment, or we're just dropping a new version of Node, these kind of things. We need to be aware of that now and think about testing in these areas to see if anything has been affected. Um, then she's got repaired. So, you know, again, what areas have been repaired? Now, normally we're talking about bugs. You know, you fix bug A and it brings back bug B. Um, so, you know, we need to be testing these now. If we fix some bug, what does that mean for other parts of the system? Would they be impacted? Again, something that your automation wouldn't tell you unless if you've already knew that knowledge, um, which you could then codify. Um, and the final one is um, chronic. So obviously, you know, some systems that you probably all worked at have been truly awful, as in the areas, the functionality is massively um, full of issues. These are the kind of areas that we'd need to look at. You know, but those are the kind of areas that any change could cause detrimental problems. So they, that requires good testing. So, you know, you can use all these to help guide testing, but then one of the most important things to do after that is to then keep, go back and keep updating these checks. These checks have to be a continuous exercise. We put a lot of uh, emphasis on these checks, and we should because they give us fast feedback. But it doesn't mean that we just leave them and put them on the side. So one of the things we need to do is we need to continuously review them. So we have our checks, and then obviously we're continuously gaining knowledge from, like, as I said earlier, from other people, from doing this kind of testing, you know, deep actual testing, 
um, to find more information. And you know, we get this knowledge from so many different sources that we now need to go back and review our checks. So these checks that we have, they need continuous review. They need to be continuously checking if the knowledge that we've codified is good enough. We need to be seeing if we could change them, could we make them better. And we also need to be taking the information as well that we get out of our checks. Now, as I said earlier, a bit earlier on about checks going green, obviously checks can also be tech change, and that's great, that is really fantastic. But you need to remember that is not a bad thing. A failing check is an invitation to explore. It's the system going, I've detected change, there's a gap in your knowledge, come and fill it, come and find out this new information. So this is what I'm trying to get at when I'm saying that if your approach is 100% automation, this is why I believe it's flawed. Because you're always gaining knowledge and we always need to introduce it to these checks. And if you're so obsessed with trying to automate regression testing, trying to make that check box as big as your knowledge box, you're never going to gain any more knowledge and you're not going to learn anything new. And we need to continue to learn things new to help our business. So this is my stance, this is my model, this is FART. Um, and if you're in a company that thinks you can automate regression testing, then that's probably a bad smell. Um, and you might want to respond to that and perhaps explore other areas. So you know the clues in the name, assume the name is regression testing. Do some testing. Automation can't do all your regression testing for you. It can do parts of it, it can do the checks, and they're a good tool towards having a solid approach to regression testing. But we also need to test. And it doesn't mean testing at a separate phase. Just every time you think, every time you test a new story, just think of regression as an heuristic at that stage. Can you do some regression testing at the time of testing new features? Um, think about it at that time whilst it's fresh and just see what you can find. And then if you find something really useful, potentially automate it into a check. So this is my view. This is the model. This is my stance. I'd love to hear what you all think about it. Uh, please subscribe to the channel if you like the video. Um, or people on YouTube normally go subscribe down here or over here. I actually have no idea where it is, so just please subscribe. Uh, and yeah, we'll, there'll be some more videos soon. Thank you for watching.